This is a ThinkPad T61. It's 18 years old, and it's the best laptop I've ever used. It's easily upgradable, and I mean so damn easy to upgrade. It has socketed memory, a socketed Wi-Fi card, easily accessible hard drive, plenty of ports, and even a socketed processor. Yes, we can even upgrade the processor, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing, and more. So stay tuned. For starters, how much did I pay for it? Only 20 Australian dollars, which is an absolute steal, but it isn't in great shape, so we're going to need to do some repairs before we can do all of the necessary upgrades. And once I've done that, I'm going to do the most obvious and stereotypical thing I could possibly do with an old ThinkPad. That's right, I'm going to install Arch Linux with a tiling window manager and then get 1 million upvotes on everyone's favorite Unix rising subreddit. The first thing to do is getting the ThinkPad running, and that means replacing the fan. This is a fairly involved process, but fortunately, it's not that difficult. I only had to remove half a dozen screws from the bottom of the case, and then the palm rest, keyboard, and keyboard bezel, and then a bunch of small parts like the speaker, the clips that hold the heatsink down, and then I can remove the heatsink itself. I did end up breaking two of the small tabs that hold the fan into the heatsink, and of course I had to remove the original foil tape to access the fan in the first place, so I just reassembled the whole thing with capped on tape instead. I replaced the thermal paste when I had the heatsink off as well. The thermal paste that was on it clearly wasn't original because it hadn't dried out completely, and of course, based on the missing screws and the fact that the laptop wasn't assembled completely when I got it, the previous owner or owners had obviously opened it, and fortunately, they hadn't broken anything. Anyway, moving on, I've got 4GB of RAM to replace the pitiful 1.5GB it came with. I stole this pair of 2GB sticks from my 2008 MacBook Pro, which were original to it because it was a fairly high-end laptop at the time. And yes, once upon a time, Apple made devices that were at least partially upgradable, with socketed memory, standard SATA drives, and even more surprisingly, ports. It's a horrible laptop to work on, and the batteries have a habit of expanding, so it really won't be needing this RAM anytime soon. But I will say that, compared to this ThinkPad, it had an absolutely amazing screen. I would have liked to get 8GB of RAM for the ThinkPad, but it's prohibitively expensive because it's DDR2. So, that's the important stuff done, and the ThinkPad is now mostly functional. It still needs a clock battery, but that's very low on the list of priorities, as all modern Linux distros are capable of contacting an NTP server automatically anyway, which means the system BIOS time isn't actually all that important. At this point, if you're enjoying this video, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like and subscribe to the channel. For the first of the optional upgrades, I replaced the Wi-Fi card with one that's about 8 years newer, using a mini PCIe to M.2 adapter. The model I installed is an Intel 8265 that came out of a mini PC of some kind. The T61 has three antennas, but this card only supports two, so I just connected two of them. I wasn't sure which of the three I should have used, but it turned out fine and can completely saturate the bandwidth of our home internet connection. The Wi-Fi card needs modified BIOS to bypass Lenovo's stupid Wi-Fi card whitelist, which I had flashed prior to installing the card. Unfortunately, the T61 is an odd exception to this era of ThinkPads, which never got support for Core Boot or Libre Boot, so I can't install that. Finally, before I can install Arch, I need some storage, because this ancient hard drive isn't going to cut it. I had this 120GB Western Digital Green SSD lying around, so I'm going with that. While the original BIOS didn't support it, Middleton's BIOS allows us to reach SATA 2 speeds, so this cheap SSD will be absolutely adequate. Now, I've never installed Arch Linux before, but don't worry, that's not because I don't use Linux. In fact, it's rather the opposite. I've been using Debian and Debian-based distros, but not Ubuntu, for over 10 years now, albeit mostly in server applications. I've just never really had any interest in trying out other distros until now. I figured the Arch install script might be a decent way to go about it, but it didn't work with MBR for some reason, and I found it kind of unintuitive. It also completely refused to allow me to make a swap partition, which is rather important when you're stuck with such a limited amount of memory, although it's unclear whether that's an issue with the script itself, or if that was user error. Once I gave up on Arch install, it turned out that installing Arch following the guide on the wiki isn't difficult at all, and it went very well. Basically, I had just believed the popular claim that installing Arch is really difficult, which is clearly just not the case if you're at all familiar with Linux. I did a very minimal install of Arch, with just the basics for getting the system working, 
and with appropriate networking software so I could connect to Wi-Fi without the installation media connected. I didn't film most of the post-install stuff, but it primarily just included installing some drivers and software. Oh, and trying to use VI for the first time, and as an Emacs user, being very confused and having to search for a guide on the internet. Now that I've got X and DWM set up, I'll just be using Emacs, because I have no idea how to use VI or Vim, at least past the basics of insert mode and how to save and quit. Anyway, there's a couple more things to do, first of which is replacing the trackpoint nub. Finally, I cleaned the laptop thoroughly with isopropyl alcohol, and tried to clean up the rubberized lid with more isopropyl alcohol and some magic erasers. It turns out that IPA will dissolve the rubberized coating, so with quite a bit of cleaning, we end up with just the glossy plastic lid. This isn't quite what I had originally wanted. I actually just wanted to remove some scratches and dirt from the rubber coating because it was very ruined. I would not recommend doing this, and I would go for a more conventional approach to cleaning if you've got a ThinkPad like this. Overall, I think it turned out quite well, even though it obviously isn't perfect. Finally, the new battery goes in, and although it's not a genuine battery, it does last around two and a half hours on a full charge, depending on what I use it for. The original, which was one of the really small three-cell batteries, wouldn't charge at all, and is defective in some way. Really, I should have bought a nine-cell battery instead of this six-cell, but I didn't think about it enough at the time. We're not quite done yet, though, because now that the basics are done and Arch is installed on the system, there's a few more things to do. Firstly, upgrading from the Core 2 Duo T7700 to a T9600, and finally replacing the hinge that broke while I was working on the system earlier. Yay, so one of the ThinkPad's hinges has shattered a little bit, but that's fine. It's replaceable. The T9600 isn't actually compatible with the ThinkPad T61 because the T9600 runs with a 1066 MHz front side bus speed, while the T61 runs with an 800 MHz front side bus speed. And normally it wouldn't boot with the higher speed processors. With a simple jumper wire, however, we can trick the T9600 into running with the 800 MHz front side bus speed, effectively underclocking it and also, in theory, improving the power consumption and thermals drastically. Sure, it'll get a bit slower, but it won't be enough to be noticeable in terms of performance. The only thing is, however, that the jumper wire goes in the CPU socket, under the CPU, which is of course a bit risky. What you're seeing on screen is someone else's photo of the mod, because I failed to actually film it, and I didn't want to redo it to get proper footage, because it worked first try, and I didn't want to risk damaging the motherboard. I installed the T9600 and reassembled the ThinkPad enough to test the mod and ensure it would still boot. And yes, it did and works, but not exactly as expected. Prior to this mod, the temperatures were generally in the mid-40s at idle, and after the mod and a very substantial undervolt, the temperatures are down in the high 20s to low 30s, although that of course depends on the ambient temperature, which I haven't exactly been measuring. The CPU maxes out slightly under 2.2 GHz on both cores, which is roughly what was expected, but the battery usage seems to have increased, even though the overall power draw maybe hasn't. I don't remember what the power usage with the T7700 was, because I didn't check prior to installing the new processor, so I don't know if it's actually worse or not. But with all of the tweaks I've made, the entire laptop seems to consume around 17 watts when idling. I tested a few different modified BIOS options, eventually just returning to Middleton's BIOS, and that also seems to have improved it somewhat. The Undervolt BIOS that you can install on NVIDIA GPU systems doesn't help here, because this has an Intel GPU. At the same time as upgrading the CPU, since the laptop was already disassembled enough, I removed and replaced the snapped left hinge. This one was very stiff and seemingly partially seized when I got the laptop, and attempting to improve its condition with some oil unfortunately didn't help. I purchased a replacement and that seems to have solved the problem. And that's it for this video. The T61 works and is quite a bit cleaner, so it should hopefully last for quite a few years to come. You may be wondering how much I've spent on parts for this laptop, and honestly I haven't been keeping track of it, but it's substantially more than the $20 I paid originally. And by substantially more, I mean three to four times as much, on top of the original price of the laptop. I'm mostly very happy with how this laptop turned out, and that means there's a moral to this story. That being, one, that you can make minor, fairly inexpensive upgrades to a lot of old laptops to run Linux on them, 
And two, that Windows is bloated trash, and thousands of perfectly usable computers, both desktops and laptops, have ended up in landfill because of Microsoft's bloated software. That's not to say that you can daily drive an 18-year-old ThinkPad, but it is still a usable, albeit extremely low-end laptop with a Linux install, where it wouldn't be able to run modern versions of Windows at all. Arch Linux specifically was a good pick, and although I still prefer the reliability and consistency of Debian, Arch may have made it easier to get the most out of this ThinkPad, at least in terms of how minimal it can actually be out of the box. Sure, Debian has minimal install options too, but getting to customize the installation in the way you do with Arch was very helpful. Either way though, they are both great distros, and no doubt I would be perfectly happy with either one of them. They are just made for different audiences generally. I don't want to end this on a positive note for Lenovo though, because the quality of their laptops has declined substantially in some product ranges over the last decade or so, and they have repeatedly shipped computers with actual malware in the past. Not just standard OEM bloat, but actual adware. So, just because they made some good hardware over 15 years ago, doesn't mean they're any better than any other laptop manufacturer. And on that note, thanks for watching. I'll see you all in future videos.